Howdy y'all, I'm Dr. Fern. I'm a wildlife biologist and a biology professor. This pretty little American kestrel here is Jack. And while he does important work as an animal ambassador, educating people about birds of prey, there are actually places where his kind and other wild animals pose a deadly threat to humans. So join us later this week as we discover the unknown world of airport biologists and find out why they're the guardian angels of the tarmac. What do you think about that, Jack? I met up with our local airport biologist who planned a full day of wildlife hazard mitigation activities that are designed to keep airplanes and animals from ever interacting. I learned from Lee that bird strikes have been an issue even the Wright brothers dealt with after inventing the first aircraft. While en route to inspect the airport high fence, Lee dropped some serious golden nuggets of biology know-how. The things that you learn in college about how to increase biodiversity, increase you know, animal volume and that kind of stuff. At an airport, you take all that stuff, flip it upside down, and that's the way you manage an airport. It's the less animals there are, the less likely they are to hit a plane. Lee took me out to the Critter TSA and taught me how to set a snare myself. Oh, look at that, look at that, straight ahead. Bobcat. We missed the coyote, but a well-placed snare should keep him off the runway. I did the easy one back there and let you do the hard one. So where are you headed to next? From the smaller Charles Baker Airport, we headed to Memphis International. About 97% of bird strikes cause no damage at all. But three, you know, in the three to five range, uh, they can cause significant damage. One of the most famous in our lifetime has been Flight 1549. You know, the miracle on the Hudson. It was Canada geese. You know, we don't want broadleaf grasses. We don't want things that have lots of flowers because flowers bring bugs and bugs bring birds that eat bugs and birds that eat bugs fly and hit airplanes. Just working up the uh, pyramid of yeah. animals. Yeah, so again, you know, we're starting at the ground level and going to the air. Uh, so for me, at an airport, you're never going to be finished doing something, but you can always see improvement. And you can Next, we went to shoot off some pyrotechnics. So uh, we've got a attractive red box here. Safety and security is one of the things that, that we deal with with explosives, but they're very they're very good tools for harassing birds and harassing other animals. You know, like we heard earlier, um, you know, one of my operations guys used pyrotechnics to harass the dogs off the airfield. So using the right tool at the right time is, is one of the the tricks of the trade, I guess. We have, have a screamer and a, and a banger. Loaded today. So if you want to open that, just push that forward. There you go. And fire in the hole. <laughs> and there, this is our screamer, okay? And you have to do it, cock it again, okay? Because it's a little dirty. What I do is I'll run a banger, and when the birds get up, then I follow it up with a couple of screamers to try to get them to go that direction or that direction. This is one of those immediate steps, you know, the bird that's here right now. We make him go away. As a biologist and using the ecology is figuring out why he's there and um, using different tools to make him not want to be there. From there, Lee took us to an innovative trap that uses pigeons to keep the birds of prey off the runway. But don't worry, the pigeons are completely safe. So basically the way this works is you set the trigger here and the bird can sit anywhere it wants to because it's really tight. But when it sits in the middle and puts pressure there, it catches. So in a modification like this, we just check them all every two hours um, and remove the birds that, that need to be removed. So this would probably be a three level, 300 level course. <laughs> You're talking a lot about uh, biology and, and understanding this thing, understanding the science of the animals and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Is that uh, the biggest part of what got you your job with the USDA? Uh, yeah, I actually took a class when I was in college called Animal Damage Control. And I knew from the second day of class, that's what I wanted to do. That's the agency I wanted to work for. That's the work I wanted to do. So I, uh, you know, when I handed in my final exam, which I made 106 on, by the way, just to let Ooh. you know, uh, I handed in my resume at the same time. And, uh, and I told the supervisor, I said, hey, I'll take any, any job you got. Brilliant. You don't even have to pay me. I don't care. I just want to work for you for whatever. That's a heck of an origin story. It was back to the airport to check traps Lee had set for unwary visitors. The job seems like you really enjoy it. Has there been any bad days? You know, we had a million dollar strike a couple of years ago. Uh, an American Airlines uh, ingested a metal lark. Such uh, a small bird to right. cause a million dollars of damage. There's no easy way to, to mitigate against them. There is. We could cut the grass really short, and metal larks don't like short grass. But you know, having to make the trade for, you know, hitting 50 metal larks and no Canada geese, that's a trade I'll make out every year, every single year. It sounds like the toughest part of your job is weighing these these options and the trade-offs and the and the finding the balance. You know, just the stress of making the right choice, a right recommendation, it's difficult. All right, so last night Lee set out some traps. There was some word that there was some kind of critter or something rummaging around in the garbage and around some of the equipment. So uh, let's go find out what he got. Well, do we have any luck? Yeah, yeah we got one here. We got one over there as well. So, um, a twofer. Yeah, a day. those last week but, but we did get a you know our North American marsupial here and so he was rummaging around whatever's yeah. in here I can smell yeah. that there's something in there yeah they, you know we've asked him not to put trash in here because it's open but you know people are gonna be people and they and the consequence and the consequences so yeah we'll, we'll get him moved out of here and get him to a, a better place this one got caught red-handed under this equipment here. So they get a bad reputation of uh, carrying diseases and, and being dirty, but that's really not the case at all. Not, not, not at all. They're actually, you know, they don't transmit diseases. They can't get rabies, which is kind of a, a wow. A, one of the, the stigmas is, oh, they carry rabies. Well, they just look, they look mean and they look vicious sometimes. So it's a special day? It's a special day. These guys are going to get to go somewhere different. Uh, a little safer for where they were at. Now he's caught kind of a rat-like tail and it's curled up around my hand right now. <laughs> I gave him a little too much leeway. Yeah, they have a they have a prehensile tail, so they can actually hang for you know for days by that tail. Uh, I'll tell you, let's slide him back in there so he's getting getting a little agitated. I hate for him to get loose. And we've actually caught them with the. Uh, the baby is actually hanging on to the mom on the back. Wow. Where they crawl out of the pouch and just kind of hang on out the top, you know, out of the top. It's an exciting rare catch today. Yeah, yeah. We ready to move them to a release point? Yeah, yeah, let's get them out of the sun and get them uh, back where they're uh, not going to be a problem for somebody. Possums are one of my favorite wildlife and it felt great to find someone who appreciates them. How could you not love that face? It was also great to see that an airport biologist has so many tools in his bag to protect both animal and human from potentially deadly interaction. Kind of cautious about what's what's going on. Obviously, it's going to be a better environment for him. This guy's going to be a little encouragement, I think. So, hi, buddy. You think we bonded too much earlier? You may have. You gotta love when you can relocate an animal that's doing good for the environment and uh, keep them doing their thing and yeah. Yeah, no we, foul, no harm on their end. Yeah, they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now they're in the right place at the right time. Really glad you caught possums today. <laughs> the uh, handling scene would have gone different if it was a coon. <laughs> Maybe for you, I have one just the same. <laughs> As the sun began to set on our workday, we finished things out by freshening up some traps. 
So you've done some pretty remarkable stuff today and there's gonna ultimately be some young Lee Taylor out there watching. What would you have advice for them who, who wanna come follow in your shoes one day? Get to know as many people as you can that have different skills and go work with them. Whether you get paid or not, ask them, can I ride with you? Can I spend time with you doing what we've done today? Well, I tell you what, Lee, from catching possums to firing pyros, we've uh, definitely done it all today. And you just goes to show you, you never know what you're going to get into when you're working on the wild side. That's right. But I loved it, and I hope you all did too. And we'll see you next time. Thanks again for joining us today and letting us come out here and hang out with you. Absolutely. Anytime. It's been a great learning experience, and I loved every minute of it. What an adventure. Now you can see why there are guardian angels. So the next flight you find yourself on, I hope you take a moment to appreciate the airport biologists out there working hard to keep you safe. Or heck, you might just want to become one yourself. <laughs>